What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Heel. And in this huddle, we're going to talk about the North Carolina Tar Heels trip up to frigid Syracuse to take on the Syracuse Orange up at the JWA Wireless Dome, February 13th, 7 p.m. on ESPN. And um, it's supposed to be like 40 degrees up there. So obviously that's a completely different environment than they were a couple of days ago when whoever put together this schedule had them down in South Florida, and now they got them going to the opposite footprint of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and they're in upstate New York in February. So whoever put that together, I guess they just weren't thinking this thing through, but um, that's kind of tough, even though basketball is played indoors. It'll be interesting to see how Carolina handles all that travel time and just the different you know climates that they're in, man. That's, that's pretty crazy, but... I stinking digress. Now, North Carolina has already played the Syracuse Orange this year, and it turned out to be one of their best performances. Carolina defeated Syracuse 103-67 to at the Dean Dome. R.J. Davis led all scorers, going for 22 points. He also put in five steals. Uh, really good shooting night for him, too, as he was uh, above 50% from the field and from three. Harrison and Armando both had double-doubles and points and boards. And then they got a lot of bench points from Carolina with Jalen Washington and Jalen Withers both having double-figure games themselves. I think it was 21 combined. One had 11, one 10. And so a uh, really good game from the Jalen brothers, if you will, off of the bench. That's what kind of propelled Carolina to that 103 points. In that basketball game for the for the Qs, Judah Mintz had to earn his 21 points um, and then Quadir Copeland coming off the bench provided 16 points of his own. But before we get into the details of the rematch between the Hills and Qs, let's take a look at the updated ACC rankings. And we see that the Heels still hold a one-game lead on the Virginia Cavaliers at 11-2 in conference to UVA's 10-3 record. Puke is 9-3. Wake is 8-4. FSU is seven and five. The team that we love to hate is seven and six. Clemson and Pitt are six and six. Miami and Syracuse, our opponent, are both sitting at six and seven. Virginia Tech is at five and seven. Boston College is at four and eight. Louisville, Notre Dame, and Georgia Tech are all at the bottom of the league with a three and ten record. Dude, that Georgia Tech loss is looking worse and worse as the days go by. Yikes. But those are the ACC standings, man. Let's take a look at the conference games that are coming up because this kind of factors into what we're looking at throughout the conference. Wake Forest goes to Duke, which is a pretty significant game because that's the third and fourth place teams in the the conference also an intriguing basketball game. That 10 and 3 Virginia team, they got Pitt coming in. And Pitt can play spoiler. They beat Duke on their floor. Um, you know, they have some firepower that if they get hot, they could potentially cause some problems at UVA. That's an intriguting basketball game. And then you got Louisville at Boston College, Florida State at Virginia Tech on February 13th, same day as the Hills and the Qs. And then you got Georgia Tech. Um, down in Notre Dame, and then Miami goes to Clemson, which is kind of another intriguing basketball game in and of itself. So those are kind of the games that are coming up the next couple of days in ACC play, and you can kind of look through there, do some math, and find out how that could potentially affect our Tar Heels. So let's go ahead and dive headfirst into this thing. The Heels are averaging 82.5 points per game compared to giving up 70.4 points per game. Syracuse is averaging 75.6 points per game and giving up 74.5 points per game. Now the Syracuse Orange are two and three in their last five games with wins over Louisville and NC State, not necessarily impressive, and they've lost at BC, at Wake, and versus Clemson at home. The Syracuse Orange are led by head coach Adrian Autry, who is in his first year as the head man for retired Jim Beheim. He's amassed a 15-9 record thus far, which is good for a 625 winning percentage. 
The Syracuse Orange leading scorer is six foot four, 185 pound sophomore guard Judah Mintz, who's averaging 18.2 points per game, 3.1 rebounds, 4.6 assists, and he's shooting 42.8% from the field and 32.8% from three. Then there's six foot four, 206 pound sophomore guard. J.J. Starling, who's averaging 13.2 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 1.9 assists. He's shooting 45.6% from the floor and 31.4% from three. Then their 6'6", 200-pound sophomore guard, Quadier Copeland, who's averaging 8.8 .8 points per game, five rebounds, 2.8 assists. He's shooting 46.4% from the floor. Quadier is only shooting 24.1% from three. Then Syracuse's big guys. The Q's have six foot seven, 188 pound sophomore forward, Chris Bell, who's averaging 11.4 points per game, two rebounds, 0.7 assists. He's shooting 40.7% from the field, but he can kind of stretch you out a little bit. He's shooting 39.6% from three and last but not least the cues will send out six foot eight 222 pounds sophomore forward malik brown who's averaging 9.2 points per game 6.8 rebounds 1.3 assists but he is shooting 69.3 percent from the field and malik is only shooting 28.6 percent from Three, Syracuse's main guys off the bench include Benny Williams, Justin Taylor, Naheem McLeod, and Kyle Cuffey Jr. Uh, together, they average about 16 to 17 points per game. Um, so that's kind of who Syracuse is going to bring off of the bench. They go about eight, nine deep, if you will. So now that we've taken a look at the Northmen, let's take a look at those heels from North Carolina. And first up, the Heels are led by head coach Hubert Davis, who is in his third year at his alma mater. He's amassed a 68 and 28 record to this point, which is good for a 708 win percentage. The Heels are led by six foot 180 pound senior guard R.J. Davis, who's averaging 21.5 points per game, 3.8 rebounds, and 3.5 assists. He's shooting 43.2 percent from the field and 41.4 percent. From three, then we got six foot 11, 240 pound senior forward Armando Baycott, who's averaging 14.2 points per game, 10.3 rebounds. He's averaging 1.5 assists. He's shooting 55% from the floor and only 25% from three, but obviously he doesn't take that many of those in and of itself. He is shooting 76.7% from the free throw line. Then you got Six foot seven, 235 pound junior forward Harrison Ingram, who's averaging 12.5 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, 2.3 assists. He's shooting 44% from the floor and 42.2% from three. Then we got six foot five, 195 pound senior guard Cormac Ryan, who's averaging 10.3 points per game. 3.1 rebounds, 1.3 assists. He's shooting 36.1% from the floor and 29.4% from three. And last but not least, six foot one, 180 pound freshman point guard Elliot Cadeau, who's coming off of a 19.8 assist ball game. He's averaging eight points a game, 1.9 rebounds, 3.8 assists. He's shooting 42.8% from the floor, and his three-point percentage is up to 19.4% after he hits those two against the Canes. Now, the main guys for the heels off of the bench are going to be Jalen Washington, Jalen Withers, and more than likely Paxson Wojcik, as we still not have heard anything solid necessarily at the time of this video on whether or not Seth Trimble will be ready to go. So now that we've looked at the tail of the tape, let's take a look at Russ's three keys to victory. And key number one, off the jump, Armando Baycott is going to have to make this Baycott's block. Baycott had 16-11 and 11 in their first matchup with the Qs. He should be able to establish himself down low 
in the post because Syracuse really does not have anyone that can match up with a guy his size. That last game where Clemson just went into the JWA Wireless Dome and beat the Syracuse Orange, P.J. Hall had 15 and 10, and he kind of did what he wanted to do every time he touched the stinking basketball. So P.J. Hall goes for 15 and 10 against Brown and Bell from the Qs, so they're going to struggle against stronger guys of their caliber. Obviously, Armando Baycott is in that upper echelon, if not the top big man in the conference. So Carolina needs to run their offense inside out. Mondo needs to get his touches, and that would include – Harrison with his back to the basket, but this game should run through Armando down low on the blocks, and then we can work our way outside. Key number one, Baycott has got to make this his block. Key number two, really simple, guys, perimeter shooting. I would not be surprised at all if Syracuse occasionally goes to a matchup type zone just to see if the heels can make a couple. And obviously, I'm not talking about RJ. We're not really talking about Harrison, per se, but Elliott and Cormac. Yes, Cormac hit two against the Canes. Yes, Elliott hit two against the Canes. But will Syracuse make a concerted effort to pack the paint and see if the Heels can stroke it from three? Obviously, giving up 103 points in the first game, whatever they did there, they're going to scrap that and move on to something else. I think Carolina's going to have to make some perimeter shots in this one to get the job done, whether that's against the man-to-man or if it's against Syracuse trying to compress the paint and force Carolina into jump shots. If they start packing down on Armando and Harrison down low, Elliott and Cormac are going to have to make a play. We already know that RJ will, but we've got to shoot decent from three. And key number three, From the defensive side of the ball, listen to what I'm saying. All eyes on everyone but Judah Mintz. And the reason that I'm saying that is because Judah is Syracuse's leading scorer. He's going to get his. He got 21 against Carolina in the first matchup, and Carolina blew him out. You know what I say? Who cares? Let him have it. What Carolina needs to focus on is that nobody else from Syracuse gets Crazy. Mintz is going to get his. Let him have it. Focus on making sure that the Q's offense is unable to get anyone else going and the heels will be just fine. I think the guards need to stink and press, but obviously they need to do a really good job of staying in front of these guys because we can't let people get down into the paint and create easy buckets. I like Mondo down low defensively, and I like the Hills perimeter defensive matchups in this game. If the Hills play that patented 23-24 defense that they were playing a couple of weeks ago, they'll get the job done. If they don't, Syracuse could stay in the game late, which would give them all the confidence they would need in an upset bid. The ESPN matchup indicator gives the Heels an 80.4 chance at beating Syracuse in upstate New York. The Syracuse Orange are in desperate need, desperate need of a statement win for their tourney resume so you know that they will be licking their chops at an opportunity to knock off the Heels, especially after that 103-67 to shellacking that they experienced at the Dean Dome. The problem for Syracuse is that they just don't have enough firepower to last 40 minutes with a focused, keyword, focused North Carolina team. And we are all under the impression that after that Miami game, Carolina has regained some focus. And they shouldn't be, you know, overconfident because they won by three. Good win, but nothing to make you stinking all of a sudden think that your stuff doesn't stink anymore, right? So there's still work to do. No doubt, but we're heading in the right direction for all intents and purposes. North Carolina in this game is stingy on defense. Mondo dominates down low to lead the heels over the Qs, 79-67, to marking the heels 20th win of the year, quieting for now the naysayers as the heels return back to the Dome to face the Virginia Tech Hokies. 
So let me know what you think about my score prediction down in the comments section, Tar Heel and Orange Nation. Am I on to something or am I sitting down here at the edge of the bench with my clipboard and my bifocals on? If you are a college basketball fan and you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a huddle hooligan to help grow this thing for Tar Heel Nation. Live reaction and watch party tomorrow, Tuesday, February 13th, starting at 6.50 p.m. to watch the Heels invade Syracuse. So make sure you come and hang out with your boy. Never forget Tar Heel Nation. It is always a great day to be a Tar Heel. I love you, Tar Heel Nation, and we'll catch you on the next one, baby.